So I'm back at the Kenworth. That's my uh, truck over there. I mean, my car, and that's my truck over there. What are you getting one? Well, I was just looking at this. This is a tri drive, right? Yeah. Man, that's why I wanted to do a video show, guys, because yeah. very, you know, you don't see this often, right? No, exactly. And look at the wheelbase, right? Yeah. Because that's legal. When you have a try them, they measure from here, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, so they allow this. Yeah. Because my truck is 254. Yeah. If you uh, measure like here, so it's even shorter. It's like <laughs> probably 244. This is so long. Challenger had uh, cool. two or three of these for the uh, wind to wind towers. Oh yeah, but yeah, I see this is not a lift, right? It's a yeah. genuine, genuine because it's I awesome. see I see a drive shaft over there. Yeah, and look at the tires. Yep, twelve R. That's usually that's good in in Quebec. They like these uh, twelve R because it's like three or five. Oh yeah, you get extra weight. Yeah. Oh okay. Pretty cool. How are you doing? Yeah. yeah we get the... Basically, yeah, guys. You know, the, this is what's cool about this truck. I only notice it now. Hold on, how do I switch to... Oh, it doesn't allow me to... I cannot do a wide angle, but it, but basically it's... See what I, what I would love a truck like this. Why? Because it's... Okay, the cab is small, right? The cab, that's what everybody was complaining about, these uh, T800s like this. You can literally just sit here and reach the other door, you know, and, 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 uh, wow, look at the, what's wrong with the shifter? I guess they're doing some work on the shifter or something. It's some kind of a custom shifter. Where I never saw like open cables on the shifter, but yeah, look at the, the, the new style steering wheel with controls. You see, they did upgrade something. Like the cab is the same, but nice leather seats. And one cool, one cool thing about these uh, T800s is that when you step into the sleeper, there's a there's a step down. And so even even so, you can get a flat roof uh, sleeper, and it's still pretty tall. You know, like I'm I'm almost six feet, like 181 centimeters, and I know that. I would be able to get this truck with a flat roof and so it would look cooler flat roof is lighter and you know better aerodynamics right but this is not a this is a raised roof right and the sleeper looks pretty small but you see that's why you have you have that's what i'm missing on my truck see over here it's so easy to climb on the top there and of course you have this again that's what i'm missing and you have this that's beautiful you know you really need this on your truck especially when you have hydraulic uh, hydraulic lines you know but so let me let me just again say why i like this truck is because first off okay the, ra the radiator is the same right i would love to have a bigger radiator um for for better cooling with heavy loads but this thing has this right and that's why i wanted to get t800 because this even though this is like old design and nobody uses it but for heavy haul this is great because it gives you extra air and the engine runs cooler right not a big fan of this outside pipes because they still do this stupid thing where they disconnect them hold on wait a second this goes down oh maybe it is connected i don't know maybe they started connecting this but on my truck, this is fake. Only the right hand side uh, uh, pipe is connected to emissions. You see, this one has DEFCO, exactly what I have, except you see these guys, it says 10 at the top. So that means that it's a 10 micron. That's not good. That might work in the summer, but if you run the US with the biodiesel stuff, I'm using 20, 20 microns. But, and so, yeah, this is cool. The front tires are cool. What are they using? Oh, 385. 385, 65, 22, 5. That's not good. Uh, because in Ontario, you only get 10 kilograms. No, 11. 11 kilos per one millimeter. So this tire, even even, even if the axle is like 20,000 pounds, 
but this truck is based in Ontario, right? So you need to have 20K at your local jurisdiction. And so 385, yeah, they look, they, they're probably more practical than my 20, than my 425 tire. They're cheaper, they're lighter, but you don't get the weight, you know? On my truck, I can get as much as 20,000 on the front if I position my fifth wheel properly. But, but yeah, what's cool about this, the major attraction is that it's a tri-drive. You don't see trucks like this often, but you see this? So it has one drive shaft, like on normal trucks. Of course, you know, one differential, second differential. Wow, look at this and the size of this. That's like massive. And the suspension is this, that looks like my suspension uh, with this big Y, uh, what it's called? Um, I forgot, yeah, it's new way, new way suspension. Because even over here, yeah, it says new way. See, even airbags are new way. But this is a massive truck that can take a whole lot of beating, you see? So yeah, drive shaft there, and then it has a drive shaft here. You see? Of course, this thing, I know I talked to one guy who had one of these. This, my truck weighs 27,000 pounds. This truck weighs 30,000 pounds with full fuel and all oil and stuff like that. Um, because that thing, this adds a lot of weight, you know? And you can see, you see this? That's all double frame, double frame. Not sure what they're doing here, but at least at the bottom, I see it's double frame. And in the back, yeah, I see this, that's double frame. But it's not, it just goes over here. See, it ends over here. Yeah, I don't remember how is it on mine, but maybe just an insert but it's pretty long. And that's why this truck is heavy. So 30,000 pounds, but you have a tri-drive with, get this, 12R22.5. That tire, I once had a flat, I had this tire on my uh, steer axle. Well, just a, a steer version of this tire when I had a Mac because I had a uh, 14,600 pound axle. So I needed 12, 12 inch tire, take advantage of that. And I can tell you that 12 inch tires are super hard to find. Look, if you have a flat, you, be you, <laughs> you, you better carry one of these on your, on your trailer as a spare because you'll be sitting somewhere and waiting for this tire to be shipped. But yeah, so this is one beautiful truck, ready to work. Except they're probably installing fenders, I'm guessing. Because it still has these flimsy looking. <laughs> like, why would you get fenders like this? Check this out. Like, people probably spend, I don't know, 300 grand on a truck like this and they put $20 fenders on the back. Oh, and it's all LED, check this out from the factory all LED even backup lights are LED yep this is good this is a good truck I love this the steps you can climb right in there and look at this that's what I need on my truck I have uh, much more narrow plates like this and the, the rubber under them always moves you know because there's so much weight how much is this uh, 150 okay 150 gallons uh, exactly as mine except mine is a bigger diameter and so mine is shorter because they couldn't put it in my wheelbase is, is shorter so we had to go with a larger diameter to keep the length uh, shorter uh-huh you see what's happening here so this is your this is your uh, unit that cleans up the exhaust and you see all these sensors and stuff, right? And so this pipe goes in here, but the other pipe is connected. Wow, that's beautiful. So now basically, uh, when it's cold and you're starting the engine, the truck will look proper 
with exhaust smoke coming out of both pipes you know now where's the pipe what wait a second <laughs> I guess they took it off or something for transport. Check this out. Where's, where's the top of the pipe? Like, like that. Like the. Oh yeah. So they took those off. You see? They haven't installed them yet, so it's gonna look like that. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I will get a new truck after all. In a couple of years. Yeah. I did. I. Sorry, guys. I did not notice that right away, but. But you see, you saw the cab, right? So the cab is the same, but they did upgrade the wheel. So you can tell that this is not like a 2017 model. It's a new truck, but they still make them because there's still demand for these trucks, you know, especially in, uh, especially like in Western Canada, you know? Wow. But what's cool about this is that try them, dr try drives, they're recognized everywhere in Canada. So. If I had a truck like this, and I had to load, let's say, 70, 80,000 pounds, that works as well as my truck with a single axle Jeep, because they give you weight, right? Whereas if I go, if I go to Western Canada with my truck, I have to lift that pusher, right? Because they give me no weight for the pusher, so I just go like this with a, with a, wow, this is a beautiful looking truck as well. <laughs> but you see this the black stuff is only on one pipe let me show you because sometimes people don't believe me um, this pipe see this pipe is how clean it is see because there's no smoke coming out of there it's like ridiculous you spend so much money on this and I don't know if you can see but Let's go. This pipe just term it just terminates in there. It's not hooked up. Uh, it's not hooked up to the right because that's where the emission emissions equipment is. And so they're saying that they were having issues when they were connected, and so they took it off on this on this year. You know, on this year trucks, it's not connected. And you see, this is what happens. Like, there's so much weight here. I already replaced them once, they're still doing the same thing. Basically, these, this big tank, something is wrong with these. So I'd rather have next truck. If I ever get a next truck, I would get, see like my tank, how short it is, because it's a much bigger diameter, but it's the same, it's the same uh, 150 gallons, 150 gallons. Same as that one, except this one is bigger diameter, so it's shorter because they didn't have the wheelbase, right? That's why I need a longer truck so I can have a ladder in here and I have the plate and I have that pogo stick in there. But yeah, let's see, where does the double frame end on my truck? Oh, same stuff, okay, you see this? That's double frame, so my truck is heavy too and it's getting rusty. You know, this Canada stuff does not help. Yeah, you see, exactly like on that truck, that's your, that's the indication that this is a, a new way suspension. Heavy duty, heavy duty suspension. All right, let me go, let me go uh, inside and pay for this dirty truck. Uh, oh yeah, and you can see that this is a pusher axle because of that. And of course there's no drive shaft, right? But what they found on this, on the truck, so there was a leak. They found that one of the uh, hoses had a hole and that's why I was losing coolant. It was not my imagination. Oh, hold on. That's why I came in here with this measuring tape. I want to take that... Uh, I want to take the washer with me inside. And ask these guys if they can help me. I see I got a bunch of these, right? But... I need that. Oh, 
Jesus. So, I'm still short of, I need two more of these, or actually one, so, I couldn't find anybody, like one company promised to make, make them, but then they said the minimum is 250 pieces, that's too much, okay, so if somebody can make me these, so four inches outside, and you see what's inside, right? I don't know, two and three quarters. And they are... I don't know, 10 millimeters? No, maybe five millimeters, I'm thinking. Or six, something like that. Anyway, I'm gonna go and uh, talk to the can with inside. And hold on, did they change my filter? They did, but why is fuel so high? I wonder. Okay, it's 20, right? 20 microns, all right, okay. You see that light? That was that was was flashing before. It's in the bottom bottom right corner here. It shows a tank, like a tank with a, with liquid, and it was it was on, and it was a alarm. And they gave me this. causing the problem check this out you see this it was right under the clamp and that's why actually I had this leak before right and uh, when I went to uh, transaxle in Aberfoil I asked him I thought it was just a loose clamp so I asked him to tighten all clamps which they did but they never found this and uh, th this girl here says uh, I told her about my this experience with the other shop and that's why I brought the truck to Kenworth I just wanted a more thorough examination and she says yeah they made it worse because it was leaking and they just tightened this over the hose you see so, <laughs> so basically I guess the clamp the clamp did this damage you know and that's what was causing the issue and so I paid this is Canadian so I paid uh, Yeah, the hose here, so the, to change the hose cost 188 bucks Canadian. And replace the filter. Okay, they charge me, they charge me $109, including the part, the actual filter. And so it was, uh, Three three seven fifteen. So basically, two hundred ninety-eight bucks plus thirty-eight tax, and I will get the tax back. You see what I did here? Uh, customers experiencing coolant loss, but no sign of coolant leak. Uh huh. So you didn't see anything under the hood. Check and report. Oh, actually, yeah, I told them. I said there's no I don't see any coolant under the under the engine right and it's a check and report okay brought unit in pressurized coolant system found coolant line from firewall to CRM pipe leaking drain coolant removed line found hole in line replaced line and clamps filled coolant back uh, pressurized system and it held at 15 psi for 15 minutes and no more leaks 
see this is professional and the, and the pressure checking and the pressure good job guys thank you very much yeah so I'm gonna keep this as a, as a souvenir son of a gun under the clamp oh in both spots not just one check this out in both spots so the clamp just ate in in two and a half years the clamp just ate through this huh. interesting now in other news way my truck is uh, warming up uh, like I mentioned I mentioned this in the previous video of course I was joking I was joking about buying a house and marrying and getting kids who wants all that hassle uh, plus my car is a two-door car like I don't want to share that beauty with anyone the car sounds awesome man I just cannot believe like I, I went to my uh, to my uh, post office like a private post office and I backed in because it's a tight uh, plaza over there. I backed in and the back of my car was right against the door. And I went, went in and the door was closed. But when I went in, the guy started shouting, man, your car sounds awesome. I love it, I love it. I said, you could hear it in here? <laughs> inside, the, inside the office, you know? And he says, oh yeah. So please, before you leave, just give us some, you know, nice exhaust sound. <laughs> so the guy gets you know a good reaction from people who know what it is uh, who understand a little bit the performance oh yeah and so I'm talking to um, Fontaine and some other guys about uh, changing the deck on the trailer this last trip I'm telling you was really stressful like I was always looking at all these bridges that you know it's, it was too tall it's scary because you can do a lot of damage you know when you when you over height and I talked to there's a company in Alabama in the same town as Fontaine it's called uh, Buckner Buckner trailers uh, B-U-C-K-N-E-R Buckner I talked to Andy over there and these guys uh, first of all they can build their own trailers like RGN I don't know anything about pricing, but they were recommended to me by another heavy hauler who, who had them uh, uh, do some work. Like they can do Casta work, you know, they, they can build you a booster, they can change your flip axle to a permanent axle, they can change your permanent axle to a flip axle. Uh, that's their specialty. They do all these conversions, right? And one of, this, one of the things listed on their website was converting uh, the deck on the trailer from one style to another and so I emailed them didn't get a response then I called them I described what I want to do and the guy says okay I'm gonna call you back and he never did but then this morning I, ch I checked my you know US phone that I called him from and I see one missed call and it says uh, the area code was uh, Alabama and so I called him back and it turns out it was the cell phone of this guy so he picked up the phone right away and I said uh, Andy yeah we talked yesterday so I'm sorry I missed your call and he says oh yeah I talked to my colleagues over here and basically he described to me the how much work they would have to do like what exactly they would have to do but man uh, even before he gave me the price you know I knew that it's it's gonna be expensive because you know of course I have cross members over there right going across the trailer so they would have to modify the cross members cut them in the middle they would have to cut the sides of the trailer they would have to install new beams which are shorter to make the center higher it's and he says it probably would take uh, three four weeks and it would cost around thirty thousand dollars US and basically you're cutting up your, your deck, you know, which is not good. But I, I asked a friend of mine, I said, uh, how would you feel about buying a trailer that uh, you knew that it was 
pretty much like remanufactured, right? It was changed from level deck to a drop side rail or rail or whatever. And he said, well, I don't care. I would, I would look at the quality of work. If it's good work, if it's, you know, it's, if it's like a genuine, you know, trailer with no problems, then why not? But I think it would still affect the, uh, the res resale value, you know? But yeah, once he told me that they have to not just change the, the, the rails, but the cross members and it's too much, too much cutting, you know, I don't like that. And basically I told him, I said, hey, I have a quote from Fontaine, like the first quote, it's just not customized yet, but basically Fontaine wants my local dealer, my local dealer here, they want 44,000 US just for the deck so to, to put things into perspective my trailer with four axles the whole trailer the gooseneck the deck and the bogies with four axles uh, in 2018 uh, cost hundred and eight thousand dollars one zero eight US right one zero eight US and so now they want 44 just for the deck But what's cool is that if I get that deck, I can sell my existing level deck. I would not keep that one, you know. I would just have, I would just run on the DSR all the time. And so I can get some money back because this level deck is probably worth, you know, 10, 15 grand at least, Canadian. So, but yeah, so that option was too expensive. The, the option about just sending my trailer to um, to the Buckner trailers guys and have them uh, go at it but I just I don't feel comfortable with so much cutting and the price doesn't make any sense right why would you spend 30,000 uh, and you know and cut your trailer and lose uh, possibly resale value when you can finance 44,000 and get a drop side deck and then you can sell your deck you know even let's say 10,000 US right now your brand new uh, DSR ends up costing you only 34,000 US, right? So, but anyway, I still haven't filled up the filled out the application for the loan. I'm still thinking because it's a lot of money, but that's what I was uh, dealing with. And also, I've been giving quotes. It's super busy, um, but people still stick to cheap rates. So I was I quoted a move uh, from Michigan to Saskatchewan. I quoted a move from Virginia to Nova Scotia. Then there was somebody offered me to move an articulated truck from Baltimore Port to uh, Canada to Ontario. Everything is too cheap. I give them a rate; they don't like it. So I'm not in a rush right now. So uh, I just want to relax a little bit. So so tomorrow. Uh, oh, today's Wednesday, right? So today I should get the decals, the hood decals for the car. And so Friday I'm installing the hood decals and uh, Saturday I'm changing the tires. Oh, one cool thing happened, I forgot to say. Yesterday I go to, uh, you guys are gonna laugh at this, but I picked up my car. Remember they did the like oil change and stuff and uh, and they were doing alignment because you know when I changed to uh, stacked design, right? I put 275 millimeter tie on the back. And uh, hold on, I put I put 275 millimeter tie on the back, and I kept 245 on the front, right? And so the 275 millimeter tie is Sumitomo, Sumitomo, Japan, and 245 is Goodyear. And so I picked up the car and then uh, I went on a trip with this, with that uh, drainage plow, right? And then I moved to, jumped over to North Little Rock to move this uh, 980M. And so yesterday I, 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 I brought the truck here, took Uber, went to grab my car and I went for uh, some lunch. I went to this A&W, uh, burger please got some papa and mama burgers love that stuff and i'm sitting there 
uh, because of course you cannot dine inside so I just parked my car I didn't want to make a mess inside so I parked the car back towards the curb and I sat on the curb inside this plaza you know very quiet like nobody bothers you and I was just eating these burgers basically sitting next to my rear tires on the car and I'm eating enjoying the you know the the burger and then I'm just I'm just looking casually at the tires on the back and something strange registers you know in my mind because I see it says good year I'm like wait a second good year I say how can this be I, I keep reading and it's it's sure enough it says Eagle R S 245 uh, 4520 like wait a second did somebody steal my tires you know did somebody while I was away that was my first thought for some reason <laughs> I thought that somebody stole my two Sumitomo 275 tires because they were in the back and I'm like what the heck how I why do I have the did that Indian guy I sold I sold those tires to an Indian guy I remember I was talking about this I said the guy was um, um, he just finished the tracking school and he couldn't find work and so I thought maybe he did something maybe he came back and uh, what stole my tires and put my old tires back like that doesn't make any sense like I'm going crazy over there and then I I leave my burger keeping an eye on the stupid seagulls there there were so many seagulls around me you know like when they see somebody with eating food they just they start making all these awful sounds you know kah, kah. hate those things but anyway i shoot them away and i went to the front just out of curiosity just to see what what ties i have on the front and guess what sumitomo 275 like wait a second i have wider tires on the front now and I have 245 on the back and then I remembered that the car was at the Chrysler when where they were doing alignment right and so basically the stupid guy I, I have no other word for this but the mechanic did the rotation for some reason even though I did not ask for this I said oil change alignment right the guy rotated the tires but that's fine but why would anybody in their sound mind put a 275 tie on the front and 245 tie on the back of a rear wheel drive car and so yesterday when i discovered this i wanted to go and give him hell at the chrysler but then i said okay forget it so i just went back to uh, cal tire when i bought those uh, sumitomo ties and i said guys um and i told him this funny story about Chrysler putting big tires on the front I said okay you know what I didn't want to do four tires at once but I said now I'm ready I just made some good money with this last run I want to buy two more tires and you know take off these 245 and put the 275 on the back so I will have 275 all around and so now we booked the appointment and they opened Saturday so they said okay uh, the tires are in uh, Mississauga in their warehouse, so they'll be there Friday and they said bring your car Saturday and we'll do the install and I said please balance them as well and they said yep and so they're gonna give me back these two tires and I'll sell them again on online get probably 100 bucks whatever 150 bucks back Canadian but that was funny like the guy rotated the tires without me asking to do that and he put big tires on the front small tires on the back just nuts and actually this today i i couldn't just keep it inside i just went to the chrysler and i said guys i want to give you some feedback you know like whoever worked on my car they did this and the lady said okay we'll have the manager talk to the guy i said yeah just don't do this to other customers you know because some people might get upset and you know I was upset like why would I do a stupid thing like this so so anyway so this week is about my car um, so decals Friday and new tires um, uh, Saturday and these are all summer tires and so I'm gonna uh, when it comes winter I'm gonna switch to all winter 275 tires and then just store store these somewhere at the probably the tire place and then switch back to uh, but the car feels uh with 275 tires it feels much better i like it i think that's how they should have uh 
ship this car from the factory because it has way too much horsepower for 245 tires, you know. Anyway, so now it's time to drive my truck back, park it uh, the trailer and take an Uber and grab my car. And that's all the hard work, you know, I do today that's truck related. I hope you enjoyed this short video. Take care, enjoy your coming weekend, ciao.